You don't have to wear the gear to be a firefighter. When you've got something on the stove, an unexpected fire could break out, so be prepared. Stand by your pan while you're cooking. Keep a fire extinguisher close by and know how to use it. Remember pass. Pull. Aim. Squeeze. And sweep. You'll feel like a hero too. And welcome back. Uh, we have uh, our friends that come by every month. Uh, Steve Concialdi is the PIO for uh, Orange County Fire Authority. Captain Steve Concialdi. Thank nice you, Nice to have you back again. And of course, Lynette Round. She's the Communi Re Community Relations Supervisor. Yes. And uh, we got a lot to talk about today. And um, tell me about, uh, you know, not long ago there was an incident in here. Uh, and you get this all the time in this area, in Orange County in general, where there is a fire and quite often the culprit is the wrong kind of plug adapter or whatever you want to Correct. call it. Correct. We have a lot of electrical fires in Orange County and the one in Laguna Woods um, just last month did about $275,000 worth of damage and mm -hmm. it was a simple kitchen fire. The homeowner had one of these multi-plug adapters. Mm -hmm. The problem is it doesn't have a circuit breaker. Okay. So when you plug something like this in, you could easily overload the circuit. Mm -hmm. And he just basically had some kitchen appliance, small kitchen appliance, like a toaster, a blender, a coffee maker, plugged into okay. s to something very similar. It was, it was a six outlet. But it, again, it draws too much current and it could overload and it could cause a fire like in this case. So what we recommend is never to use these. Okay. These should never be used. We recommend Basically, um, an adapter like this, a multi-plug adapter that is a surge protector and a circuit breaker. Okay. That way, if there is any problem, if there's a short, if there's a problem with electricity, it will automatically shut off and there'll be no more electricity flowing. Okay. When, when these are plugged in, even when they're up, a small appliance is off, you still have current mm -hmm. running, running through. Right. So these we never recommend these and also these are little zip cords and a lot of people have these yes these are outlawed in every business because they've caused so many fires they're little zip cords yeah so I have several of those. basically throw them away throw, them okay. away. throw oh, every <laughs> single one away because we get fires often and a lot of our fires one of our top five fire risks are electrical fires and it, it's you know it's cords like this and and, Are there uh, cords that, you know, sometimes people need an extension cord right. for various reasons. And um, I, actually, I use mine, things like this, for uh, my Christmas lights, which are almost all LED, so they're, you know, drawing a lot less. But can you find extension cords now that have a circuit breaker in them? Now, I've noticed some of them, I have a couple of them, actually, I should say, a lot of the Christmas lights nowadays with uh -huh. the LED have that little circuit breaker fuse in right. there. So they're, they're getting better, but we yeah. just recommend these. These come in various sizes. Okay. And you could have small, you could have, you know, six here, but we just recommend these. Okay. If you need to. And then another thing, if you're not using a small appliance like a toaster, a toaster oven, a blender, a coffee maker, unplug it. Just get in the right. habit because then there's no worries. Right. Here's the thing. A fire can start even though it's turned off. But if it's plugged in, it can still get that current coming through mm -hmm. it. And so if there's any type of damage to the cord, maybe you can't see it with your eye, but it's inside, it'll arc, spark, and cause a fire. Okay. Yeah. Now, I always uh, unplug, ever, ever since uh, you guys started coming on, <laughs> my toaster. Perfect. My coffee maker, I do not because the cord actually goes down to okay. a plug that's mm -hmm. kind of underneath the counter and all that. But uh, I wanted to ask you, I bought these. Maybe I bought the wrong kind. I just got these. And this is a Belkin surge protect. This would be basically like for computer equipment and things like that. 
And um, you know, I don't know how, how good this is. Belkin is usually a very good brand. Actually, the only thing I intend to plug into this is our, um, our router and modem mm -hmm. at home. That would probably be this. So just make sure it has a circuit breaker. Look okay. on there to make sure it has a circuit breaker. So if it doesn't, that's right. a, which you want to switch all these out then. Correct. Okay. Here's the thing. Your outlet is usually two of these. And that's all that outlet can right. handle is that electricity right. for that amount. So if you need more plugins, you might want to call an electrician and have them come in and provide more. Because if you need more electricity, we want you to do it the right way so that a fire doesn't start. Okay. Just last week in Buena Park, the family had an outdoor cover, kind of a, a get-together get area. It mm -hmm. was a covered patio and they set it up with a refrigerator and some other appliances and everything. And there was just a simple extension cord that was running on an appliance. Well, the day before, also in a grocery store, we had um, another large appliance plugged into an extension cord. The problem is, is extension cords should not be used in lieu of permanent wiring. They, they draw okay. too much current. So basically, over time, there was some sort of problem. There was a malfunction, and it, it did significant damage to the, the market, and then the next day to this, this home. Yeah. All because of faulty electrical and, and they were using extension cords. So that's why when let's say if an electrician, if they could have ran power, then, then that appliance, whatever it was, it was a freezer or refrigerator, could have been plugged directly into the wall, into the outlet. Okay, and that's, that's a good thing because I know I have a freezer <laughs> in my garage and I do have a 15 amp extension cord, oh. but there's yes. no outlet there. I mean, I have physically no place it, it goes to uh, you know, another outlet. See, that's where you might want to call an electrician to come in and maybe look at your wiring and rewire to put an outlet in out there for you for that. Yeah, yeah. Extension cords, again, should never be used in lieu of permanent wiring. Okay. They're just temporary. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to be using something every day or often, mm -hmm. then it needs to be plugged directly into the wall. All right. That's, that's good to know. And, uh, you know, we all use these. And, uh, right. And you, you could see, like, something like this. Yeah. Multiple, multiple plug-ins right here. And, and this is what we see when we go to a fire right here. Mm -hmm. it, it is just, unfortunately, it's drawing too much current. It yeah. gets overloaded, and then there'll be combustibles down there, and it starts the carpet on fire or anything around there, a trash can or blankets. That's okay. the octopus. Yeah. You don't want to have an octopus at your house. Right. Exactly. It, there's two well, have outlets, to, yeah. two plugins. These plug are easy fix for me. It's the, it's the freezer in the, uh, you know, in, in the garage that right. has the extension cord. And, mm -hmm. Uh, th that I should probably look at. Definitely. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's definitely. It. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, is, as far as, you know, every, every time you're here, especially this time of year, water safety. It's always important. Again, there's been some drownings. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's sad. It it's is sad. really sad. And I know that some of them are, at times, adults that go out to the pool by themselves, their home pool, a spa, whatever it might be. Definitely. This year, unfortunately, we've had quite a few of them. There's been 35 drowning incidents, 12 fatalities, and um, most of them have been adults. Mm -hmm. The unique thing about this is they're drowning in the bathtub, the ocean, and single-family home pools. Okay. So our big message is always swim with a buddy. You want somebody there in case something were to happen. If you're alone and you hit your head or you have a heart attack or a seizure or something like that, there's nobody there to help you out. So you want somebody there mm -hmm. in case something happens. And we can, we can stress that over and over, but people have to realize that something could happen. They have to know that this could happen to me. Everyone, ah, it's not gonna happen, it's not a big deal, but it really is. Something could happen, you just don't know when. Yeah. So if you're with a buddy or you're with a friend or whatever, whatever you want to say, swim with a pal, swim with a buddy, we just want somebody there with you in case something happens. Yeah, And exactly. if you have grandkids, um, we can't let our guard down. If we have grandkids with us and there's any source of water, you definitely have to be watching them constantly because they're quick and they're going to run out and be uh, fascinated with the water and the way it works and how it feels and they're going to want to touch it and be in it. So you have to constantly watch the kids around the water cannot let your guard down at all. Yeah. And we can't trust those water wings. We had the one right. in Ladera mm -hmm. where the little two-year-old girl, she just took the water wings off and then sunk down to the bottom. So they mm -hmm. either deflate, they take them off. And you know, I think a lot of people, parents, grandparents, think, oh, they're okay. Right. But if the, the children are four or younger, you need to stay within arm's length of mm -hmm. them if they're near the pool because it happens so quick. 
Definitely. Yeah. Any type of distraction can make you look away. That's when things happen. Oh, it was just a second. Right. But in 20 seconds, an, a toddler can go down, dr get submerged and go under. You wouldn't even know it because it happens so quickly and it's quiet. Yeah. I keep telling people, you're not going to see it. You're not going to hear it. it. They just silently go under because they're struggling to breathe. Their head's above the water, their body's below trying to stay up. And then they just get so tired, they just go right underneath. And yeah. nobody will see it happen unless they're really watching for it. Exactly. Uh, there was um, people heard in the news the incident at uh, Mission Viejo High School, which was quite right, quite interesting. In that somebody was uh, doing something they weren't, they shouldn't have been doing, as far as they weren't trained to do that. And can you well, explain I, that I, a I don't bit? know about that. They were erecting scaffolding. Okay. So they were putting scaffolding up. Unfortunately, it was just too close to the electrical lines. So it was up pretty high. It was over the sound wall along mm -hmm. the 5 freeway, close to La Paz, but it was on the practice football field at right. Mission View High School. And they were up there pretty high, and the f the f there was a, a crew of three. The first crew member was up there, and somehow he came in contact, and he, he went down. So he was on the top of the scaffolding on the wood. A second co-worker ran up there and uh, started doing CPR right away because he was in full cardiac arrest. There was a baseball game, a summer baseball game going on between Mission and San Juan Hills. Two coaches ran over there and one of the coaches went all the way to the very top and started to talk to the gentleman doing CPR. Well, he stood up and when he stood up, he came in contact with the electrical wires on the back of his wow. neck. That's how close it was. And it, it basically shocked him and then it physically threw him over the railing down below. 25 feet away from the scaffolding. I mean, it was <clears throat> yeah. very tragic. The first gentleman, he did die up there. The mm -hmm. second one had entrance wounds to his neck and then exit wounds out his hand and his hip because the current is trying to go down. It's trying right. to find yeah. the path of least resistance. And that's it went out his hand and his hip. Plus, he suffered injuries from the fall. So very traumatic. Luckily, nobody else was hurt because the coaches, one coach was still climbing up and then uh, couldn't get up. So basically he came down. The other coach, luckily as he saw him touch it and he fell back against the side, put his hands in and just stood on the wood. Or, or if he would have touched it, he would have got shocked as well. Wow. So we just need to respect electricity. It, and it just happens so quick. Un you know, unfortunately there was a death here. Um, it, it's been removed. Mm -hmm. uh, the scaffolding and and so now it's an investigation but it, it's just sad you know? yeah it really is uh, one other thing we want to talk about that would be very pertinent today when it's going to be close to 100 right. degrees out of staying right. hydrated and as we all know that there's sometimes um, you may not feel that you need to be drinking water or something like that and in fact you do and uh, you know, we've all done this. I've been working outside and then all of a sudden I get up and I'll feel like, whoa, a little bit dizzy or something like that. And it's, you know, time to quit. Uh, the importance of staying hydrated, right? Right, very important. We get a <laughs> lot of medical aids during this time because people get overheated. Mm -hmm. they, even they're doing their routine work, they're working in the garden or they're running off to the store, they're playing with their grandkids and they haven't been drinking enough water or they're drinking too much caffeine, coffee, mm -hmm. tea. Or, Tea. Lots of tea. We don't want that. Yeah. Right. Sodas. <laughs> and basically those are diuretics. They'll, they'll make you go to the bathroom and so right. forth, but you're losing a lot of water. You have to be drinking water and, and lots of it. Definitely. Okay. And know if you're going to be outside, go ahead and drink that water ahead of time. Pre-hydrate. So if mm -hmm. you're going to be out, sometimes a lot of people don't sweat, but sweating is your body's natural um, reaction to cooling itself off. So you want to make sure that you have that fluid in your body so it can cool you off. Yeah. Um, you don't have definitely. to sweat to be cooling off, but you definitely have to stay hydrated because it could lead to some serious health issues and even death. Right. And when you're thirsty, it's already too late. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why Lynette says prehydrate. If it's going to be a warm weekend, warm week, drink plenty of water. And if you start feeling thirsty, sit down. If you feel lightheaded or dizzy, sit down right away. Get some water, relax. And all right. Take a deep all good advice. <laughs> right. And check time. out all, all your different <laughs> right. uh, connections yeah. here. Circuit breaker. Yes. Make sure it has a circuit with circuit breaker yes. in it. Right, exactly. All right. That, it, does that mean it has a switch on it or it's got a switch and it'll say on there there's a circuit breaker. Okay. 
All right, very good. I'll check that one out. Definitely. All right, thank you for coming on. It's good to see you. It's good thank to see you. And uh, we'll see you in about a month or so. Wonderful. Yeah, All right, take care. We'll be back.